Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies. Now we're going to look at the Prime X1. This is a 39 inch bow. It comes in two models. This is the 39, I think there's a 37. Anyway, and I'm in my store and one of my regular customers comes in. He normally shoots a PSC Stinger and he's a farmer. Well, he's got a property and he brings in this orange one of these. And that was the day before yesterday with cams he goes look i don't really like he said not that i don't really like this bow or something like that and he goes i want to trade it in or i want to sell it what will you give me for it and i'm like i don't know like so i jump on ebay and i go and look at what these things are selling for now best i could find so in australia these retail for around the 1900 i think dollars um on eBay in America, I could find them for about 450, 500 bucks. That's US dollars, so equivalent of about 800 Australian dollars. Um, so I said, look, you know, you'd probably get 800, 850 for it, um, but then I have to pay pay you less because I give the government 10 percent and I'd need some to make some money. So I said, try and sell it private, privately and see how you go. Because he goes, oh, I paid, you know, he had three sets of cams. Anyway, the day after this customer brings this in, he goes, how much for a trade-in? And I said, what'd you pay for it? And he paid $8.50 for it second hand. So I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, well, I'll do a review. So he traded this in on a PSE, NXT 35, I think. Um, so I thought, well, this is a great chance to do a review. Now with the Prime Bows, twin cam here, this is to balance the wheel so you don't get cam lean. Now you still have to shim the wheel left or right if you do get cam lean, so it's not like it's the be all and end all of the world, but the basic concept of this is it eliminates cam lean. So normal bows put a yoke either here or, or inside to balance it, so the yoke pulls evenly on the limbs. What Prime have done here, they've got twin cams and basically a yoke here to pull it evenly, top and bottom. Now, years ago, I said to Pete Shepley, why don't you use this system on your bows? It seems like, you know, a really good idea. Anyway, Pete in, in the PSE factory, he's got all these old bows that he's made for years, like really old, and they go and hand me one, and it's got the twin cam like this. And he goes, we did it. Years ago, the problem why we didn't continue was it adds weight to the cam and hence slows down the bow. So they didn't think that the benefit of this over a yoke system warranted the decrease in speed. So that's why PSC don't use it. Now, with the Prime system, the bottom cam is smaller than the top cam. Okay, so top cam's bigger. And the reason for that is the center of the bow is here through the grip, so it makes you more stable when you hold it. The arrow is up here, so it's higher than the pivot, so therefore you need different size cams, top and bottom, to keep the knock, knock travel the same all the way through. So, it's got a flexible cable guard here, so as you pull it, this flexes in. Number of bow companies have used this, Hoyt, PSE, Matthews, just to name a few, there's going to be others who've used it. Now, some are going away from it. It's a very simple system. It's like a piece of fiberglass rod here. Some people would call it like a little mini limb with rollers. Whether you like it or not, that's what they're using. Um, so with PSE, and I feel like I'm going back to PSE, they had a very similar system. You can wind it in or out here. And I'm referring to PSE because I know the bow. So with PSE, you can wind it in and out here. And this looks the same as the PSE system. Who had it first? I don't know. I don't know about the patents and all that. PSE have now gone fixed cable guard because they allow, it says it allows more tunability. And sometimes with a flexible cable, um, cable rod, these cables will get in the way of this site here. So, and then people can't do anything about it. So that's why they went away. The cables are all served up here, which is nice. Um, this looks nice. The thing for me is this color is absolutely amazing. It's one of the best paint finishes I've seen, whether it's anodized or paint. I think it's a paint finish. It reminds me of the old Bowtech bows, which had this marble-like finish to it. It's almost like a chrome. And I, I'm gonna say this is probably the nicest paint finish I've seen in the industry this year. Um, and I'm gonna say probably the Bowtex was fantastic. I believe the costs are really high to have that finish. So um, lower, lower position here for the 
um, rear stabilizer which is nice one position here um, the bow itself is 30 39 inches I think it's about seven and a half inch brace height which is very forgiving to shoot and shoots a speed of 315 which puts it under a lot of the other target bows so my questions with this bow is how does it compare in shootability to the other target bows on the market now with prime with the original prime bows you couldn't adjust the draw length with this one you can detach the module to change the draw length i don't know how far you can adjust it this bow actually comes with some or one set of modules to adjust the draw length but um, i assume you unscrew here uh, you would need a bow press to do that so you'd have to drop the strings now one thing on the primes i'm just going to jump there it's very hard, so when you're setting up a bow, you need to twist the string. Okay, so you need to twist the string to make the peep sight align for your eye. I find it really hard to get my finger in there to put this in when I'm taking off the peep sights and fitting peep sights. It's, and when I'm timing, see the guy with this, he timed his wheels. Kerry put little marks to see if the bow was in time. When you're timing the wheels, you've got to twist up the cables. It was really hard to get your fingers in there to do it. Um, and I've got pretty small hands. Um, I wouldn't want to have big tradey hands to physically fit those. Um, I really like this system here. This is to lock the limb bolts in place, um, the limb brackets in place so it doesn't slide out. Really like that system solid limbs i don't know if these are barn style or they use their own but um they look like a nice limb overall looks like a nice bow um now at eighteen hundred dollars um it's going to compare against the if it's eighteen hundred australian dollars it's going to compare against the psc supra which is about fourteen fifty um the hoyts are going to be up in the you know two thousand four hundreds the Bowtech, I think it's about the 2000 mark. Um, so it's going to kind of rate up against the Bowtech. So let's have a try. Let's see the, what the draw cycle's like. So this should be a 60 pound bow and it should be fully wound up. And I'm hoping it's 29 inches. So we're going to try and shoot this and see what the draw cycle's like. So oh, we're gone. <laughs> This is a this is a 50 to 60. Now I do shoot 60 pounds every day of the week. Um, I shoot 60 pounds, and that was really hard. <laughs> you can't do it. Ah, uh, all right. Let's try again. It's really hurting my shoulder up here. I can feel it all through here. Uh, <laughs> right. Do this. Might have matter. <laughs> it can't be 60 pounds. <laughs> this is going to be a really short video. <laughs> okay, let's try again. 60. 60 pounds. <laughs> I really can't. I can't do it. That's the end of this video. I, I, maybe I can wind it down. Okay, what I'll do is I'll wind this, I'll wind this down. That's just crazy. Like, I can draw 70 pounds. <laughs> I, I, anyway, we're going to wind this down. So let's wind this bow down. Now, just to prove my point, People are going to say, oh, you're pulling out your PC. This is a Supra. So this is on 60 pounds. And a lot of people say this bow is really, really smooth to draw. So this is not set. This bow is set on 60. Um, I don't like this is just like that's that's peak there. And I can hold that all day. Like it's 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 nothing. Now I will fatigue because I've been practicing um, trying to get ready for this competition. I will fatigue with you know lots of arrows. But literally I shoot 60 pounds all the time.
So maybe that person, maybe the farmer who came in, I couldn't remember what he didn't like about this bow. Maybe it was the draw cycle. I didn't pay much attention, real well I might have. But I know he like it was brand new and I'm like, I was thinking, why would you want to get rid of this? This is like a far better bow than your five hundred dollar bow. Um, and you're gonna get rid of So what I'm doing is I'm unlocking the the thing on the side and we're gonna wind this down. So I'm like, you're getting rid of your 500, you're getting rid of your 18, $2,000 bow and you're keeping a 500 buck bow. That makes no sense. So I was like, well, like whatever. But if that bow set on, if this bow set on 60, I understand. Like very easy to wind down. So these, this system here is really good and that's what all bows should have. So two, three, so I'm winding out three turns. I don't know how many turns you've got out. How many turns you can tie it to wind this down? One, two, three. Now with the elite bows, they can only wind down a few turns, so just be really careful with them because you don't want the bow to pop. Um, it's really bad when bows explode on you, as that happened to me today. Um, well, my staff ran out and said, are you dead? Um, <laughs> I'm like, no, the bow just exploded. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is this grip is fantastic. It's one of the nicest grips. The angle here is nice. The width, it's wider than a wider than a um, Hoyt, wider than the Elite. It's uniform. I feel it's a little bit narrower than a PSE. I feel this is a great grip, like really, really nice grip. Um, it's as nice as any grip I've ever felt. Now, if I get to draw this bow back, I'm shooting this arrow I use on all my ends to test all my bows. This is a gold tip velocity, weighs 327 grains. It's 400 spine arrow at about 28 and a half with a 90 grain point. So that's peaking there, now it comes back, the so it feels pretty solid back here, so the draw cycle is kind of interesting. Um, I don't guess it probably peaks later than a normal bow, it's got quite a big valley in it, so bigger than, like your Hoyt has no valley, it's short the target bow, the PSC has got a little bit bigger valley. Your Matthews has got a short valley. This is a big, big like, I'll just demonstrate again. So here it's, see like there, you're getting like there's nothing there. So you've got all this preload on the string, like maybe an inch where you're getting no poundage. I'm gonna guess that's because of the, the limbs aren't preloaded to put more tension on the strings. Uh, so there it's easy. Now it's peaking, 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 peaking. Now valley, 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 valley. So the valley is like in that range there. It's almost like an inch long. Now that shot 282. Um, I don't know the poundage of the boat. It feels heavier than my 60 pound to draw. Um, I don't think it is. It's a lot slower bow than the than the Matthews, than the um, Hoyt, than the PSE. I mean, those bows are very similar in speeds. This is... Like, it feels nice. Like, it's when you get it back here, it's nice, but... Now, when you shoot the bow, I don't know if you can hear it. When you shoot the bow, it's like... Poof. There's a fair bit of vibration in the handle when you shoot it. It kind of pushes down like that and you can feel it. It's like, it's like an old school bow where you feel a lot of vibration through the hand grip and it comes through here and I can feel it come back up my arm. Um, now, why is there vibration on this bow and not the other bows like the Hoy, the PSE, the Matthews? It's because the limbs, the limbs are not at 90 degrees. When you've got a 90 degree limb and it's moving up or down, the vibration 
cancels itself out. These limbs are not parallel, so they're bouncing forward. So the bow's bouncing forward. You can see there's not a lot of tension on these strings. Um, as a result, you're getting a lot more twang in the shot. Um, I suspect I'll shoot okay. With, well, I suspect I'll shoot good with this bow, but it's. I know why he traded in. Wow, and when you shoot it, it's like Ooh. So if ever I wanted a prime dealership, I'm not gonna get one now with this video. Um, now I'm gonna say prime make beautiful bows. The finish is fantastic, and I've shot a lot of their hunting bows with the parallel limbs, and they're wonderful. This bow is not something that I would want to shoot. Even though it looks fantastic, I love the paintwork, it's, it might as well be from the 1980s because it's got vibration, it jumps forward. It now, I'm, I'm okay with bows jumping forward, but I want, to, I want it to be crisp. I want it to be, yeah, I want it to have purpose. Um, and if I'm paying like two grand for a target bow, I want to see it be better than the 1450 buck bow that's used to win world championships because if I'm going well an extra 500 bucks it better be 500 bucks better um, the grips really nice the grip is brilliant um, so the speeds are low that one so the last one I shot that was with a VAP arrow that was 260 feet per second um, longer draw length than I'm used to so it's longer than my super in draw length so I think with that what I'm going to do is we're going to get back to 18 meters and we'll shoot some groups and see what they look like I think I'll shoot pretty good groups with it um, because it's got a big brace height and I think it'll be quite forgiving to shoot so let's see okay so we're back here to 18 meters and I've sighted the bow in I'm going to say I've shot a lot of prime bows in the past and especially the hunting ones, and they've been lovely to shoot. They've been had a great draw cycle, they've had, been great with vibration, they feel great. This is not one of those bows. This is not that. The grip is, I still remain, this grip is fantastic. The paintwork is fantastic. Um, the draw cycle is, is terrible. Um, as far as it's sloppy, it feels sloppy to shoot. Um, it feels extremely slow. For, the, for how hard this bow is to draw back, it's extremely slow. And that's because you've got so much lag at the start, which is not producing any energy for you. Now, let's see what the group's like. Now, even if I shot a great group, it's not gonna encourage me to get this bow. Um, When I shoot it, it goes bang, so it goes left to right. Um, it's stable to aim, so when I'm aiming the shot, it's 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 great. It's it aims really well. But like when I shoot it, it's like, like that, and yeah, that look that would go with stabilizers. Um, See, I think one of the issues here, see the balance is good. Most of the target bows, the balance is backwards, so when you add stabilizers, then it balances it up. Um, but, it's just, yeah, not a, not a fan of this bow at all. Now I always say before you buy a bow, it's great to go and shoot it and compare models. Um, do your research. Um, and bear in mind whoever's giving the review on the product, are they paid by that company to do that review? Um, It's 
just like you you can shoot decent scores with this okay like it's not it's not like oh it's a crappy bear you can't shoot decent scores absolutely you can shoot decent scores you can shoot decent scores with the recurve it's just this bow feels as fast as my recurve um, that probably is <laughs> And I don't like, I don't know if you can see, but I'm actually struggling with the whole draw cycle of this. It's actually hurting my shoulder. Um, where my target bow that I normally shoot, it doesn't. I will fatigue with shots when I, because I haven't been practicing. But. Now Prime used to have a deal before where they'd give you a new set of strings every year or something. I don't know how you claim that. I don't know how that works. Um, right, look at this. So this is the yoke. So this is a yoke system. Look here how loose these strands are. Like, see there? Like, I'm hoping you can see, like, So with this bow, you've got one, two, three, four, five, five strings. So if you're making up strings for a prime, there's a lot more work than a normal bow, which would have three strings. Although you can go and say the PSEs now have five strings as well, and yes, that's a pain in the butt to make strings up to four as well. Last arrow. I think probably the grip still there is pretty good. It feels crappy to shoot. Now, don't let that stop you. Don't let my review of this bow stop you buying a prime hunting bow because the last ones I shot were awesome. Um, this is not in the awesome category you'll shoot good scores with it i'm absolutely positive it's just not as crisp as the other top of line bows now if you buy this bow for 800 bucks i would argue well it's probably not a bad buy at 800 because you're getting all top of the line gear on the bow um for 800 it's it's fine but not at the two grand mark so let's go down there and have a look Okay, so I'm here at the target. Look, the group's not bad. Left and right's very good. Um, you know, if I take out this arrow here, which is high, and that low one, I get my fingers around the group really easy. And that's with a five pin hunting sight, no peep sight. The draw length is too long for me. So I think that group's pretty good. And I think I'd shoot decent scores with this bow. It's just not nice to shoot. It's not a, the draw stop's not that positive because you've got such a big long valley it doesn't feel crisp to shoot but it, it would be an accurate bow because you've got a big brace height big axle axle it lobs the arrow the same every time so i'm sure you could shoot a decent score with this bow um it just doesn't feel as good the draw cycle doesn't feel as good and for the price point, I need it to be better. Um, so I'm going to finish again with the summary and someone said in my things I go around in circles. The grip on the Prime X1, fantastic. The paint finish, fantastic. I uh, love the overall finish on the bow. Um, draw cycle, no. Vibration, no. Um, the sound, no. Um, so my overall, where I think this bow sits, um, when I went to Vegas, I don't think I saw one of these bows being shot, and I imagine that's pr pretty much why, uh, because you would have shot the Hoyt, you would shot and shoot the Matthews, you'd shoot the PSE, and then you'd shoot this. It's not in the same class as the other three bows. Um, 
However, if you do get one cheap, you'll shoot fine with it. And if you're shooting one, you're probably gonna shoot fine with it. And you're not probably gonna shoot any better with any of those other bows. The other bows are just feel nicer to shoot. It always gets back to the more arrows you shoot, the better you're gonna shoot. And with that, I better go and shoot some arrows um, and get my muscles in tune for the up and coming competition. I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery, Archery Supplies. Thanks for watching, bye.